I've been using fasting to help people with type 2 diabetes safely get off their insulin for about eight years now. And it's been such a joy to find a natural practice that can deliver such meaningful results to people. I'm going to share results with you from a recent clinical study we did in a group of 20 insulin using participants. A link to the paper is in the description down below so you can see all our methods and results. Our study involved two low carbohydrate meals in a six to eight hour window daily for six months. 19 out of the 20 participants completed the entire program and 14 of those got completely off insulin by the end of the study. The other five had their dose reduced by more than 70%, and they did all this without increasing their A1C. The average participant also lost more than 25 pounds and lowered their blood pressure. Participants in our study had been on insulin for over nine years on average. Many of them were off within weeks. Needless to say, they were very happy about it. Historically, insulin-using patients have been counseled against practices like this out of concern that adding fasting to the insulin could drop the blood sugar too low, and that is absolutely true. But we ask the very interesting question, what if we thoughtfully scale back the insulin ahead of time and eventually stopped it? Could they do it then? Because then people would not be on so much insulin, and so might it be safe? And could the fasting be strong enough to replace the insulin? The answer is yes. Here's the amazing thing. Every provider who prescribes insulin already has a protocol in place to handle something like this. Patients routinely have to fast for medical procedures like a colonoscopy, and providers routinely adjust insulin to compensate. Typically, long-acting insulin doses are cut in half the night before a procedure. This is exactly what we do before starting the fasting protocol. We also eliminate all short-acting doses during the fasting period, and we keep two short-acting insulin doses initially unchanged in order to cover those two meals. We further adjust the insulin as needed using a titration protocol based on updated blood sugar readings. We always try to lower the long-acting insulin first because that's what has the greatest risk of hypoglycemia during the fasting period. There's a lot more detail and data in the paper, and I'll have a lot more to say about this as time goes on, but I'd love to hear your reflection and feedback about this work. I believe this process can totally change the way we understand and treat type 2 diabetes. Providers can safely implement this type of process in their practice, and they can bring the power of fasting to a group of people who could really benefit from it. I invite you to review our paper, check out some of our other fasting-related content, and I'll look forward to seeing you back here soon.